Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today what I want to do is talk about some adjustments you can make in the way you construct your pants that can improve the fit. Now I know a lot of times during Fit Tip Tuesday I'm focusing on different fit adjustments that might help you. Today what I thought I would do is share with you a few things you can do to your pants pattern or your pants pieces while you're sewing them together um, and pressing them that can make a big difference in the way your pants fit. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the style of pants that you're working on. So if you're working on a pair of pants with the crotch curve touching your body or very close to your body, you can sew your crotch seam in a way where it makes more room for you. So I have some mini pieces in front of me. I cut some shorts here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one leg inside the other, okay? And we're gonna pretend that I'm sewing these pants. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match my inseams and I'm just going to put some pins and for this example I'm just going to press both of my inseams towards the back along the crotch and then I'm just going to pin up my my back crotch And I'm just gonna ouch. I'm just gonna put a few pins in there. So there's my back crotch and the front crotch. Okay. And what I want to show you guys is if you sew your pants together and you try them on, and one thing that can really help, when I was working on the pants that I'm wearing, I was so excited to finish them, I didn't stop and check the fit as I was sewing along. So I basically sewed them up, put the waistband on, and then tried them on. And what ended up happening was my waist was a little bit too big. So I had to go in and take in my side seams and then adjust my waistband. So I guess a fourth tip would be fit your pants as you're sewing them together. So you can make fine tune adjustments you know, by just taking in that waist just a little bit at the side seams and or the center back seam to make that waistline really fit. So that that is a, um, a good tip as well. Um, then when you try them on, what I want you to do is notice how they're feeling. And this is especially important if you tested your pants pattern with one fabric and then you're sewing your final pants together in another fabric. Try them on, sit down, see how they feel. So for issue number one, if you're feeling like it's pooling or it's too tight through your center back seam, sort of where your butt curves, so there's something you can do to make more room even though the pieces are already cut out. So what I want to show you here is Okay, so I'm just going to sew this, the center back seam here, the crotch seam, and I'm going to take my pins out as I come to them. So this is like the typical way, you know, you're sewing, you matched up your edges, and you're sewing your crotch. So I'm just going to sew up to the base of the zipper seam allowance here. Okay. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is let's measure the back crotch from the inseam to the waist. So I'm just, just gonna lay it out. I'm just gonna put my ruler here and I'm gonna lay my ruler right along my stitching line like this. Okay, and that measures 16 and a half inches right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out and I'm not gonna 
pull it as I take it out. I'm just going to slide my seam ripper along the seam like this. And I'm just going to carefully cut the stitching. I don't want to stretch. I mean, I don't want to pull it. I just want to take out the stitching. So I'm just going to use my seam ripper like this. Ball side in. Like this. Now that I've gotten that taken apart, I'm going to pin it back up and I'm going to show you another way to sew, which will actually give you a little bit more room. So I'm just going to put the pins back in. Okay, so this time when I sew it together, I'm going to start sewing from the waist like I did before. Now when I get down to where the crotch curve is starting to curve, I'm going to gently straighten that curve out into a straight line. So I'm not following the curve, I'm just gently stretching it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna join it at the crotch where I had it before. All right, so now let's remeasure this. All right, so let's measure the crotch curve now and see what it measures. So I'm measuring from the inseam stitching line, just like I did before, straight up. This time my center back seam is measuring 17 inches. So I was able to stretch the curved part of the crotch longer. So what that's going to do is when you sit down and when you bend your knee and when you're moving, you're going to have a little bit more vertical length um, and it probably will also make it feel more comfortable. Because if you think about it, the crotch shape, um, this U crotch shape that we have here, we're relying on that to give with our body when we sit and walk if we're working with a pants pattern that is snug and close fitting. Now, if you're working on trousers where the crotch does not touch or it hovers below your body, this isn't as important because you have air between you and your center back seam that will be sort of a buffer for you. So when you sit down, you'll still have plenty of room and you won't have to worry about stretching it. And in fact, I've seen some people stabilize the curves of their crotch on trousers with some stay tape. I think that that's a perfectly fine thing to do if you're working with a pattern that you don't, that isn't close fitting. Okay. If your pattern is close fitting, I think I would allow that crotch curve to stretch and grow with you, um, depending on how you're moving. So that's one thing you can do if you are test fitting your pants and they're feeling a little bit snug in the back, take the back center back seam out and stretch it a little bit. The second thing I want to talk about is the waist darts. Waist darts are printed on the pattern, but that does not mean they need to stay where they are located on the pattern pieces. So I recommend basting in the waist darts and then looking to see how they're shaping your back view. If they're not laying properly, um, usually you can tell if they're too long or too short, um, but also they might not be in the right place along the waist. So feel free to take those darts out and either slide them closer to the center back seam for a low butt, for example, or you can slide them closer to the side seam um, to help fit the back of your pants. And Sometimes the two things that I use as guiding factors for that is if you have a really pronounced hip curve along your side seam, having the, the waist start closer to the side seam can help create that curve along the side of you. And then if you're more of a rectangle shape, the dart can look better farther away from the side seam, more towards the middle of the pants. And then if you have a low butt, the dart 
tends to look better if it's closer to the center back seam. So those are just some guides and of course depending on your overall shape you know you may need to fine tune that but I just want to give you permission to not sew the darts where they're printed on the pattern. Okay so feel free to base them in and then check them in the mirror after you've put your pants together before you put your waistband on and see if you like where they are. All right, so this last tip is for when you've constructed your pants, the waistband is on, and now you're trying them on for the first time as a complete pair of pants. One thing you can do to improve the look of the way the leg is draping is by creasing the middle of the back leg and or the front leg. This is a technique tailors use to get pants to drape nicely from the waistband. All right, so you can see here, this is the back view of the pants that I'm wearing now. And you can see I have a little bit of ease on the back leg and they look okay, I'm happy with it. But look what happens when I crease the back leg. Basically, I started at the tip of the back waist start and then I creased down the leg. Putting that crease there actually makes the leg drape better. So if you're looking at your back view and you want to try to get the fabric to hang a little bit nicer, go ahead and give yourself a crease down the back leg. You can also crease the front of the leg if you'd like to as well, um, but you can see it sort of directs the fabric in a more um, organized fashion down your leg to have that crease there. And this is a technique that you know master tailors use when you bring your ready-to-wear garments to him to be altered and to you know fit better on your body. So um, consider creasing your back you know, consider adding a crease to the back leg to smooth it out. Um, if you really like the look of that and you don't want to spend time with your iron creasing the back leg every time you take them out of the dryer, you can consider sewing a very, very subtle pin tuck down the back leg. And that will provide you with a permanent pleat that you won't have to fuss around with to um, reestablish every time you take it out of the dryer. So those are three things that you can do while you're constructing your pants and after you've constructed them to help them fit a little bit better without touching or adding any fit adjustments. I hope you enjoyed this little bespoke pants fitting tutorial. Um, it definitely goes under the topic of the whole scoop multi-method pants fitting because you know it's the whole scoop everything that has to do with pants. I'm super excited. Um, next year is going to be an amazing year for pants for me because that's going to be my primary focus. I'm working on new patterns, both men's jeans and women's pants. And I just want to take a minute as we're getting close to the end of the year to thank each and every one of you for following along with me. I really, really appreciate it. I love getting on my computer in the morning and reading all of your questions and comments. Um, so please feel free to post, you know, keep those coming because um, I really do feel like I have a connection with you guys because, um, you know, you're, you're watching, you're following along, you're interacting with me by asking me questions and comments. And I actually even get emails from people, which is always so nice. Um, so I want to thank you all and I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday and I will see you, um, on Friday for FabFit Friday this week. Next week there will be no FabFit Friday. I have to take my dad to a doctor's appointment. So I just want to give you a heads up on that, but, um, I'll probably be working on a Christmas present on Friday, something I'm finishing up for for somebody on my list. So that's what I will be doing on Friday. And um, thank you so much for watching and have a lovely rest of your day.